Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be calculating the integral of the function 1 over x squared plus 1. So with the method we're going to be using today will be trig substitution. Um, so to use this method, you need to figure out what to substitute and what to substitute for. So let's actually take a look at this function right here. We have 1 over x squared plus 1. You see we have this x squared plus 1 part on the denominator right here and we kind of want to substitute our x for something. So we have x squared plus 1 and we want to turn x into some kind of a trig function maybe. And as you look at this thing and you want to think about some trig identity ideally that would kind of simplify things a little bit. So maybe you think of something squared plus 1 maybe being equal to something else squared and maybe a nice trig function that fits this identity right here is the tangent function because if you have tan squared of some angle plus one that's actually going to give you a secant squared that's a standard trig identity so what we can actually do now is if we substitute x for our tangent then once we do the substitution we're going to end up in the denominator with tangent squared plus one and that actually nicely simplifies down to secant squared of something. So let's actually do the substitution right now. Let's let our x be equal to the tangent of some new angle. Let's just call it theta for now. And notice once we do the substitution, we're going to have tangent in here. But also notice this dx right here. We still have to deal with this part. So to find this dx in terms of theta, we just have to differentiate both sides. So we have dx being equal to the derivative of tangent theta, which is actually secant squared of theta, times d theta. So this is our little expression for our dx here, once we do the substitution. So we have our dx part and we have our x part, and now we're ready to throw all that stuff into our integral. So now we have the integral of one over, and now remember our x will turn into the tangent of theta. So we have x squared right here, I'm gonna write that as tan squared of theta right now and we still have this plus one right here and for our dx that actually turns into secant squared of theta times d theta and just like we said before we have tangent squared of theta plus one turning into secant squared of theta so that's the reason why we did that substitution so that this part right here can simplify down a little bit so now we have the integral of one over secant squared of theta times the secant squared of theta, d theta. And the really nice thing is right here, we have secant squared theta on the bottom and another one on the top. So this thing will cancel out with this thing right here. And all we're really left with in this integral is just our one. So we just have the integral of d theta. And integrating d theta or one times d theta is really quite easy. It's just gonna be theta itself. Okay, and now remember we started with x's. We started with x as our variable. So ideally we would like to end up with x in our answer. And to do that we can just use our substitution right here. Because we have a single theta by itself. So what we can actually do with our substitution is take the inverse tangent on both sides. So we have inverse tangent of x being equal to the inverse tangent of tangent of theta which is just theta itself. So you see we have theta right here being equal to tan inverse of x and that will be our final answer. So tan inverse of x like so and don't forget your plus c and this is the final answer for our integral.